let's start with Hooke's law in one dimensions or 1D and then build up to Hooke's law in 2D or two dimensions and then 3D. If I have a bar and I pull it in, you know, with some force P at both of these uh, faces, it's going to extend and there's going to be a change in length. So its original length was L and now it's L plus delta L. The strain, epsilon, is defined as the change in length uh, divided by the original length. So it's a relative change in length, a relative change in dimension. So it's delta L over L. You would call this a normal strain because, you know, it's, uh, it's the extension is normal to this, these, uh, these planes. And there's a corresponding normal stress, which is given by the force divided by the area. And let's say the area of that face is A, you know, and that would be the area of that phase too. And Hooke's law says that stress is directly proportional to the strain, um, so you can write it in this form, where E is the Young's modulus. It's a material property and it's a measure of the stiffness of the material. Larger is the Young's modulus, the, the more stiff the material is. And this is valid only in the so-called elastic range. Um, so if I, you know, if I plot, if I do this in the lab, and I plot, you know, I, I apply different stresses, you know, I, I keep increasing p and correspondingly sigma, and plot, you know, fi figure out what the corresponding strain is. So I have strain versus and plot strain versus stress. Initially, I'll get a linear variation, which is what this gives me, and then I'll get yield, and then I'll get nonlinear variation. So it's this is valid only in the linear range. So it's called you know linear material property, and it's called elastic because once you release in this range, once you release the the force, the material will come back to its original state. Let's extend this to two D. And I'll go back to my little chunk of material. And now, when I pull it, not only will it extend in the x direction, but it'll also shrink in the y direction. So I have a, a strain, you know, normal strain in the x direction that's given by this change in length. So if this is, if this change in length is delta LX and, you know, this dimension is delta x, then the change divided by the original dimension gives me the strain in the x direction. But I also have a strain in the y direction, a normal strain, that's given by this change in length. So delta, if that is delta ly, okay, um, that gives me the normal strain in the y direction. And delta y is, you know, it's a decrease in length. So delta y is negative, and so this strain is negative. And it's been observed that the, the you know, if I have a normal stress like this, it's the strain it creates in the y direction is some fraction of the strain it creates in the x direction. And that fraction is given by Poisson's ratio. And I have a negative here because the you know, if this is a tensile strain, this has to be a compressive, so this will be negative. And if I put a negative sign here, then Poisson's ratio is positive. So that's a material property. And um, so I know that you know from the previous uh, discussion, from uh, the discussion from the last slide, I have the strain in the x direction as given by sigma x over e. So, so that's a strain in the x direction and then the corresponding the strain in the y direction now is given by, you know, if I just use that formula, it's minus nu epsilon x and so I'll get that. So it's just a fraction of, of that and it's, it's going to be 
opposite in sign to the, the original strain in the x direction. Now let's pull in both directions, in x as well as in y. Okay, so I have sigma x, you know, pulling in with sigma x in x and pulling with the stress sigma y in y. And so it's, so sigma x, you know, there's going to be a strain in the x direction due to sigma x. This we already saw. Now sigma y is going to cause shrinking in the, uh, in the x direction, and that's going to be given by the Poisson's ratio, okay? So that's going to be the strain caused by sigma y in the x direction. Similarly, I, you know, I can write for the strain in the y direction. And the assumption embedded within these expressions is that the material is uh, isotropic, that is, that it behaves in um, the same in both the, you know, in all directions. So I, I can add up the, the effect of sigma x and sigma y in this way. So that's, you know, that shows you uh, normal strains and its relationship to the normal stress. Next, let's take a look at the at the shear strain and its relationship to the shear stress.